What would you do when your soul is required of you? What do you need to pray about right now that God needs to forgive you for? So that when you stand before him, All right now. you'll be right. Mm -hmm. Covered in the precious blood of the Lamb. Name wrote in the Lamb's book of life. When I get to heaven and they open up the book, I want my name to be there. And I want yours to be there too. And it's so easy to forget that when this world is so many things coming at us. It's, it's this on the TV. It's that kind of news. It's this kind of weather. This, this, down, this downsizing of our economy. But those things are not your concern. Your concern should be, is my soul right with God? Because he is your provider. If you trust in that, he's going to provide for you. He's going to protect you. He takes care of those that belong to him. Amen. So your concern is, is my soul right with God? <laughs> Time will end, but eternity remains. Finally, it was night. He retired to his bed. His mind was full of thoughts and schemes of what he would do on the morrow. So preoccupied with the things that he was thinking about that he didn't hear the rushing of the wings of death All right now. as they entered his room. Suddenly the man trembled with a great shudder. He lay just that quickly, it happened. All right. Boom. Gone. And if God speaks to you about something, He said today, fool, your soul shall be required of you. This tells me He was already judged. Well. He was already judged. God, we serve. 
Yes. Well, let me make this real to you. On a daily basis, we live our lives. Our children go to school, we go to work, we come back home, and we sit in front of our TVs. Yes. And without a second thought, we might look at something that is not even giving God and not only that, we take our kids to places that we know that they will be influenced badly. But it's all right. Don't be so tied up. Don't be so holy. We got time. Let them be kids. Let them do what they do. Let them party and club. Well, let me tell you this story. So young man went to the club one night. Worship leader at the church. And his friends kind of pushed him into going. He, he said, you know, man, I don't want to go. He said, look, man, this is in a whole nother time. Ain't nobody at that church going to see you down there. Come on, man. Shh. It's going to be all right. Let's, let's creep over here. No, nobody at the church that you praise and worship leader at going to get to see you do this, man. You, hey, just come on, hang with your boy. You too tight. You too tied up. So he goes to this club. Little did he know that the enemy had a track set. That night that club burned down and he was trapped inside. Only 20 people got out. And the rest of them perished. And this young man was one of them. And the church bulletin, they didn't want to shame his mom, but this is what they read. And I'm going to make this up, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we like to say, our brother Keith was such a wonderful person. Keith was caring, dedicated to the Lord, and Keith will be missed for all the wonderful works that he has done. <coughs> and the pastor sat back and he started humming. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. Hold my hand on. And the women in church, they said, said what's wrong with Pastor? Because Pastor knew where the boy died. In. And he had prayed for this boy. Put his hands over this boy. Because this boy was his son. And he said, Lord, hold my hand. One decision can change your whole <coughs> eternity. Yes. See, your life, you might think it belongs to you, but it belongs to God. Amen. But it's your choice to choose to love him, deny him, leave him at the church door and go out there and live in the kind of way you want. All right. But don't be like this young man who had the right teaching, who had the right role models, but became the lover of this world and lost out. See, his daddy probably thought, my baby's singing every Sunday. He's worshiping God and he's sitting on the pews. He's ushering. But his father never did remember his son coming to the altar and giving his life to God. All he knew that his son was working in the church. All right. And some of us are working in the church. But our soul is not God's. We're just doing practices. We're just practicing. Acting like we're something that we're not. See, the private conversations that you have with yourself will tell you who you are and whose you are. <clears throat> so as I stand up on this altar today, on this pulpit, 
And when you leave out that door today, ask yourself something real. Am I saved? Am I free? Am I his? I heard another pastor say, you know these young people are living out there in the streets and they're doing all kind of minor of evil, but then they roll in here in the casting and then we try to pray them into heaven. It's too late to pray them in. He said, if you're going to live out there in the street, they should have your funeral out there. And that sounds hard, but it's hard to be out there in the street and not acknowledge God. And then over your dead body, you want these preachers to preach you into heaven. It's too late. It's too late. But I know that the family members, when they walk up here and they view the body, I know they see that child, but who's thinking about that soul? Out of the, out of the body, into the presence of the Lord. And in that presence, you get judged. Wow. So as we, as we, Open up the doors of the churches. I'm not going to keep you long. I think I have made my point. And I hope Holy, the Holy Spirit makes this point in you.